Psalms Bible Book Summary Psalms Summary by J. Smith The genre of Psalms is songs and poetry of all kinds. It is written by multiple authors. David wrote 73, Azaf wrote 12, the sons of Korah wrote 9, Solomon wrote 3, Ethan, and Moses each wrote 1, P.S. 90, and 51 of the Psalms are anonymous. They were written over the span of approximately 900 years, beginning at the time of Moses, 1440 BC and through the captivity in 586 BC. The Psalms include praises of joy, laments, blessings, and thanksgivings. They are directed at God and they help us to express and communicate ourselves to Him. We read about the psalmist emotions from one extreme to another, from praising, delighting in and worshipping God with fervor, to repentance and crying out to Him in despair. Psalms sit at the very center of the Bible. The major themes found in Psalms are praise, God's power, forgiveness, thankfulness and trust. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh will bless His holy name forever and ever, 145 21. The Book of Psalms was originally divided into five books, O Book 1 consisted of chapters 1 to 41. O Book 2 corresponds to chapters 42 to 72. O Book 3 is chapters 73 to 89. O Book 4 included chapters 90 to 106. O Book 5 is compiled with chapters 107 to 150. Mainly, the Psalms were written to help us deliver praise to God who is worthy of such. As Psalms 150 verse 6 reads, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. How do we know what God wants for us in our lives? Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. 119 The answer is found in reading His word, studying it, and applying its unchanging fruits to your life. Summary's courtesy of the Ultimate Bible Summary Collection. Bible Summary Bible Hub. We got a man hit! We got them all here! here. Moving the big tank to fix it! An enemy over there! And poetry. This book was written mainly by Solomon, the wisest king ever to Proverbs Bible Book Summary Proverbs Summary by J. Smith The genre of Proverbs is mainly Proverbs, as the name describes, there are also some parables and poetry. This book was written mainly by Solomon, the wisest king ever to rule, however some of the later sections are written by Lemuel and Agar. It was written during Solomon's reign 970 to 930 BC. He asked God for wisdom to rule God's nation and he granted the request. The main purpose of this book is to teach wisdom to God's people. Proverbs are short clever explanations, which are easy to remember. They contain truisms.
Story. Solomon wrote it late in his life, approximately 9.30. Ecclesiastes. Bible Book Summary. Ecclesiastes Summary by J. Smith. The book of Ecclesiastes contains proverbs, maxims, sayings, and is largely an autobiographical story. Solomon wrote it late in his life, approximately 9.35 BC. He had become aware of the mistakes that he made throughout his life and began to document them. The purpose of Ecclesiastes is to spare future generations the suffering and misery of seeking after foolish, meaningless, materialistic emptiness, and to offer wisdom by discovering truth in seeking after God. It appears that Solomon once again wants to teach the reader wisdom, I set my mind to seek and explore by wisdom concerning all that has been done under heaven. Don't, Don't be afraid. afraid. It is a grievous task which God has given to the sons of men to be afflicted with. One thirteen. That's what I know. Chapter one to two deal with Solomon's personal experiences throughout his life. He describes that everything he sought was selfish pleasure and meant nothing eternally. Generally, he speaks concerning the meaning of life. I have seen all the works which have been done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and striving after the wind. 114. Solomon, the man whom God gave the most wisdom, sought after, researched, and tried everything in an attempt to find lasting happiness, and came to this conclusion, all that my eyes desired I did not refuse them. I did not withhold my heart from any pleasure, for my heart was pleased because of all my labor and this was my reward for all my labor. Thus I considered all my activities which my hands had done and the labor which I had exerted, and behold all was vanity and striving after the wind and there was no profit under the sun. 2 colon 10 11 In chapters 3 to 5, Solomon gives common explanations and observations. One in particular is 515, as he had come naked from his mother's womb, so will he return, speaking of everyone who dies takes nothing with him, possessions, in the end, are ultimately useless. As tough as it is, our sinful nature naturally gravitates toward materialism. Chapter 6 to 8, Solomon gives advice for having a meaningful life, consider the work of God, for who is able to straighten what he has bent. 713. In chapters 9 to 12, Solomon writes a conclusion that clears up the entire book, everyone will eventually die and all the deeds of man are vanity, useless, without God, our obedience must be to him. The conclusion, when all has been heard, is, fear God and keep his commandments, because this applies to every person. 12.13 Summaries courtesy of the ultimate Bible summary. Solomon is the author and he wrote it sometime during his reign. Songs Bible Book Summary Song Summary by J. Smith The Book of Song of Solomon is a large love poem filled with smaller poems of different kinds. Solomon is the author and he wrote it sometime during his reign 970 to 930 BC. It is a story of a bridegroom who is in love with his bride. Key personalities are King Solomon, the Shulamite girl, and friends. The story greatly emphasizes the sanctity of marriage and that it is designed, blessed and consecrated in the eyes of the Lord. The purpose of the Song of Songs, as it is also called, is a picture of God's love for his people. Although there is explicit sexual content, it is a book in which we can learn the depth of God's authentic love for us and what should be in the sacredness of marriage. In chapters 1 to 3, Solomon writes of the courtship and engagement of the beloved, Solomon, and the lover, Shulamite girl, 
my beloved responded and said to me, Arise, my darling, my beautiful one, and come along, 2.10. Chapters 3 to 4, we read of the marriage ceremony of the bride to the bridegroom, Go forth, O daughters of Zion, and gaze on King Solomon with the crown with which his mother has crowned him on the day of his wedding, 3.11. Chapters 5 to 8 are the relationship between the husband and wife and the power of their love. Many waters cannot quench love, nor will rivers overflow it. If a man were to give all the riches of his house for love, it would be utterly despised. 8 colon 7. Summaries courtesy of the Ultimate Bible Summary Collection. Isaiah. Bible Book Summary Isaiah Summary by J. Smith The book of Isaiah is narrative history, prophetic oracle, and even a parable, chapter 5. The prophet Isaiah wrote it at approximately 700 BC, chapters 40 to 66, written later in his life approximate 681 BC. Isaiah is the first book in the section called Major Prophets. They are called major prophets because of the large amount of material they wrote not because their message was more important than any other prophet's was. Key personalities are Isaiah, his two sons, Shejeshob and Mashallah Jashbas. Isaiah contains some of the most incredible prophecies of any book. It contains foreknowledge in incredible details about the Messiah and the future reign of Jesus Christ. The purpose of the book of Isaiah was to call God's nation, the nation of Judah, back to faithfulness and to declare the coming Messiah at Emmanuel. God called calls and commissions his prophets to declare to Judah and Israel condemnation, conviction, and ultimately great hope. In chapters 1 to 39, Isaiah points out the sins of both north and south kingdoms. He then declares severe punishment to them and all the neighboring nations around them, wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, remove the evil of your deeds from my sight cease to do evil, 116. He proclaims great hope of the coming Savior, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign, behold, a virgin will be with child and bear a son, and she will call his name Emmanuel, 714. This passage was fulfilled in Matthew 1 verses 22 to 24, in the New Testament. Chapters 40 to 55, speak of the return and restoration after the exile from Babylon. Isaiah repeatedly claims the premise, there is no God beside me, 44 colon 6, 8, 45 colon 5, 6, 14, 18, 21. There is also another foretelling of the Messiah, who will come and bring new life through his death, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth, like a lamb that is led to slaughter, and like a sheep that is silent before its shearers, so he did not open his mouth, 53,7. In chapters 56-66, Isaiah writes of the new heavens and earth, this is that great reward for all those who trust and obey God. He proclaims the hope for the afflicted and judgment for the evil. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things will not be remembered or come to mind. 65.17 Summaries courtesy of the Ultimate Bible Summary Collection Bible Summary Bible Hub Jeremiah Bible Book Summary Jeremiah Summary by J. Smith The book of Jeremiah is prophetic oracle and narrative history, although not completely in chronological order. The prophet Jeremiah wrote it sometime during his ministry about 626 to 586 BC. Key personalities are the many kings Judah, Baruch, Abdemelech, King Nebuchadnezzar, and the Rechabites. 
Its purpose was to warn of the destruction that they were about to face and to urge Judah to return and submit to God. Jeremiah was a priest who God calls to be his prophet. Jeremiah identifies their sins and treachery as he wants them to realize the serious condition of their sinful ways. He then gives prophecies of the coming king and the new covenant that would be made. In chapters 1 to 10, God calls Jeremiah and proclaims, I have put Put my words in your mouth, 1 colon 9. Jeremiah condemns Judah for their sins and attacks their faithlessness, obviously angry over their blatant sin. Chapters 11 to 28, Jeremiah warned of the destruction that would be poured out on Judah. He writes about God's hard dispense of holy anger. At one point God says, I will not listen when they call to me because of their disaster, 12-14. A lot of the wickedness that angered God was the constant worship of false idols and gods, and the sacrifices they were burning to them. From chapters 29 to 38, Jeremiah writes about the new covenant and the hope that God would bring when he delivers them after the captivity. King Zedekiah, who did not heed his warning, throws Jeremiah into prison and then into a cistern. Nevertheless, Jeremiah warned that the king would fall into the hands of the king of Babylon. Chapters 39 to 52, Jeremiah records the events of the fall of Jerusalem in 586 BC. As many prophets had announced in the past, the empire of Babylon indeed laid siege to Jerusalem and the land of Judah. This completes the exile of both kingdoms, the northern kingdom in 722 BC and now the southern kingdom in 586 BC. As Jeremiah had declared in 37,17, King Zedekiah was captured and his son murdered in his presence, he was blinded, bound and dragged off to Babylon in captivity. In chapter 50, God promises to rescue his nation from captivity. In verse 17 to 18 God declares, Israel is a scattered flock, the lions have driven them away. They First one who devoured him was the king of Assyria, and the last one who has broken his bones is Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon. Therefore thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I am going to punish the king of Babylon and his land, just as I punished the king of Assyria. The capital of Assyria was destroyed so severely it was not discovered until the 19th century AD. Summaries courtesy of the Ultimate Bible Summary Collection Bible Summary Bible Hub From chapters 29 to 38, Jeremiah writes about the new covenant and the hope Chapters 39 to 52, Jeremiah records the events of the fall of Jerusalem in 586 BC. As many prophets had announced in the past, the empire of Babylon indeed laid siege to Jerusalem and the land of Judah. This completes the exile of both kingdoms, the northern kingdom in 722 BC and now the southern kingdom in 586 BC. As Jeremiah had declared in 37,17, King Zedekiah was captured and his son murdered in his presence, he was blinded, bound and dragged off to Babylon in captivity. In chapter 50, God promises to rescue his nation from captivity. In verse 17 to 18 God declares, Israel is a scattered flock, the lions have driven them away. The first one who devoured him was the king of Assyria, and the last one who has broken his bones is Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon. 
Therefore thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I am going to punish the king of Babylon and his land, just as I punished the king of Assyria. The capital of Assyria was destroyed so severely it was not discovered until the 19th century AD. Samaris Katesi Lamentations Bible Book Summary Lamentations Summary by J. Smith The Book of Lamentations is book of sorrowful songs or poems. The name implies that the topic is expressing grief over something to lament. Jeremiah, also known as the Weeping Prophet, writes this after the destruction of Jerusalem by the Babylonians. Babylonians it was written soon after the fall of Jerusalem in 586 BC, he was an eyewitness. He predicted this destruction, as did others, watched it take place, and now in this book he is sadly reflecting on it. Key personalities are the prophet Jeremiah and the people of Jerusalem. Its purpose was to express despair and teach God's people that disobedience to the Lord results in immense suffering and distress. Jeremiah pours out his emotions in compassion and empathy for God's nation as he watches them inhabit a foreign land. In chapter 1, Jeremiah mourns for Jerusalem and Judea as it lays in ruin by the raid and destruction of Babylon, how lonely sits the city that was full of people. She has become like a widow who was once great among the nations. She who was a princess among the provinces has become a forced laborer. 1 colon 1 Chapter 2, he described the anger of the Lord who brought judgment to the wicked land, as God had warned, in fierce anger he has cut off all the strength of Israel, he has drawn back his right hand from before the enemy. 2 colon 3 Chapter 3, we see Jeremiah expressing his troubled spirit and suffering in gloom. He too is afflicted, as his homeland has been pillaged. On the other hand, he reminds us in verses 19 to 23 that God is faithful and will restore and bring his promise to pass. The Lord's loving kindness indeed never cease, for his compassions never fail. 322. Finally, in chapter 4, we read that God has brought justice and ruled mightily. During the siege, the city of Jerusalem suffered incredibly. Starvation was so bad and widespread that the Israelites resorted to eating their own children. The nation was warned about their sin and disobedience and the penalty of the coming judgment of God, and in verse 11 we read, The Lord has accomplished His wrath. Summaries courtesy of the Ultimate Bible Summary Collection Bible Summary Bible Hub Ezekiel Bible Book Summary Ezekiel Summary by J. Smith The book of Ezekiel is narrative history, prophetic and apocalyptic in genre and even contains parables. The prophet Ezekiel wrote it approximately 571 BC. This date is accurately precise because this book contains more defined dates than any other book in the Bible. Key personalities include Ezekiel, Israel's leaders, Ezekiel's wife, King Nebuchadnezzar, and the prince. It was written to announce judgment upon Judah, to allow them one last chance to repent. It also foretells of the coming deliverance of God's nation from captivity in Babylon. It mainly discusses the events during the Babylonian Babylonian Captivity Ezekiel is a priest who is called by God to deliver his messages. In chapters 1 to 3, God commissions his servant Ezekiel. He receives visions, and his message is to confront God's sinful nation, 
I am sending you to the sons of Israel, to a rebellious people who have rebelled against me, they and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day, 2 colon 3. Chapters 4 to 24, Ezekiel delivered the message of doom to the captives. He told several parables, one that compared Israel to an adulterous woman, 16 colon 1 63. He taught them that God was cleansing his chosen nation, for have borne the penalty of your lewdness and abominations, the Lord declares, 1658. From chapters 25 to 32, Ezekiel condemns judgment upon seven particular nations who mocked YHWH, the God of Israel, because of the captivity, they too would soon see their fate. These nations are Ammon, Moab, Edom, Philistia, Tyre, Sidon, and Egypt. In chapters 33 to 48, a message of deliverance and restoration is written. This includes not only the current nation of Israel but also the future of the coming Messiah, the Temple, and the Kingdom of God in the end age. In chapter 37, he writes the famous vision of the Valley of Bones, he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, Phono, 37 colon 3. Summaries courtesy of the Ultimate Bible Summary Collection. Daniel Bible Book Summary Daniel Summary by J. Smith The genre of the book of Daniel is narrative history, prophetic oracle, and it includes apocalyptic material. The prophet Daniel wrote it around 530 BC and his writings records the events of the Babylonian captivity in 560 to 536 BC to which Daniel was a servant. It also describes the apocalyptic visions given by God and reveals the events and plans for everyone's future. Key personalities of this book include Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Belshazzar, and Darius. The purpose of this book is to provide a historical account how the Lord God protected and provided for his faithful followers while in captivity. It also includes a vision of future redemption and hope. In chapters 1 to 6, Daniel writes about his own life in captivity. He was selected to work for the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel, or his Babylonian name Belteshazzar, and his friends made bold and tough decisions and several times displayed their integrity to stand for godliness instead of culture. They rejected the king's food, prayed when it was illegal to do so, and refused to bow to the king's idol, for which they were thrown into a scorching furnace. Daniel interpreted the king's dreams twice then was promoted as chief over all the wise men in Babylon. Yet, through all the great things that Daniel did he claimed it was God that did it through him and he gave all the glory to God, it is he who reveals the profound and hidden things, he knows what is in the darkness, and the light dwells with him. 2.22 Chapters 7-12 to contain the visions that Daniel received from God and the events that are involved in his prophetic ministry. A portion of this includes the results of the earthly kingdoms that he lived in. They also mention the coming Messiah and the apocalyptic events to come. As for me, I heard but could not understand, so I said, My Lord, what will be the outcome of these events? He said, Go your way, Daniel, for these words are concealed and sealed up until the end time, 12 colon 8-9. To be continued. Summaries courtesy of the Ultimate Bible Summary Collection. Hosea Bible Book Summary Hosea Summary by J. Smith The book of Hosea is a narrative history and prophetic oracle. Hosea is the first book in the sections of minor prophets. They are called minor prophets not because their material is less important or insignificant, but because of the size of the book they wrote was shorter in length. The prophet Hosea wrote it at approximately 715 BC. It records the events from 753 to 715 BC including the fall of the northern kingdom in 722. The key personalities are Hosea, Goma, 
and their children. Its purpose was to illustrate the spiritual adultery of Israel and God's boundless love for his sinful people. Hosea brings God's message to the wicked northern kingdom. During this time, they are active in oppressing the poor in slavery and worshipping idols. God, because of his grace, sent another opportunity for Israel to repent and turn to him. Shortly thereafter, Shortly thereafter, the Northern Kingdom went into permanent captivity. In chapters 1 to 3, God gives Hosea instructions to marry an unfaithful woman and he obeys. His unfaithful wife Goma leaves him and finds another man. Hosea is faithful, he finds her, redeems her and brings her back home to him. Then I said to her, You shall stay with me for many days. You shall not play the harlot, nor shall you have a man, so I will also be toward you, 3 colon 3. Chapters 4 to 14 Hosea describes how Israel has been unfaithful to God. God wants Israel to repent and turn from their wickedness. He wants to restore Israel however, they continue to disobey and follow their own ways, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you from being my priest. Since you have forgotten the law of your God, I also will forget your children, for colon 6. Joel Bible Book Summary Joel Summary by J. Smith the genre of Joel is narrative and prophetic oracle. The prophet Joel wrote it around 841 to 835 BC sometime before the fall and exiles of the northern and southern kingdoms. Key personalities are Joel and the people of Judah. Its purpose was to call the southern kingdom to repentance or prepare for the coming judgment. Joel describes the locusts that inflict severe damage to everything in their paths and warns that it is only the beginning of what is to come. Chapter 1, Joel compares the destruction and judgment of God like a plague of locusts. This is the warning and penalty for disobedience and evilness, for a nation has invaded my land, mighty and without number, its teeth are the teeth of a lion, and it has the fangs of a lioness, 1 colon 6. Chapter 2 to 3, God calls his people to repent and return, if not, they will all be judged. The promise and deliverance of the Lord is waiting and he will restore the land, return to me with all your heart, and with fasting, weeping and mourning, and rend your heart and not your garments. Now return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in loving kindness and relenting of evil, Two colon twelve dash thirteen. Amos. Bible book summary. Amos summary by J. Smith. The purpose of the book of Amos was to announce God's holy judgment on the kingdom of Israel, the northern kingdom, call them to repentance, and to turn from their self righteous sins and idolatry. God raised up the prophet Amos as an act of his great mercy to a people who repeatedly shunned and disobeyed him. Chapter 1-3, to Amos came as the days of the wicked northern kingdom were winding down. The people were religious but it was sadly superficial. Amos announces that the neighboring nations would be punished. There were many of these wicked nations including Damascus, Gaza, Edom, and Tyre. In chapters 4 to 8, Amos warns that Israel will be destroyed and gives examples of this judgment. Amos comes, announces God's coming judgment to the northern kingdom and uses the phrase, the day of the Lord, referring to God intervening to punish and judge the wicked city, which would eventually be exiled by the Assyrians.
Seek good and not evil, that you may live, and thus may the Lord God of hosts be with you, just as you have said. 5.14 In chapter 9, Amos tells of the restoration and hope of Israel, in that day I will raise up the fallen boot of David, and wall up its breaches, I will also raise up its ruins and rebuild it as in the days of old, 9.11. Summaries courtesy of the Ultimate Bible Summary Collection Obadiah Bible Book Summary Obadiah Summary by J. Smith The Book of Obadiah is a book of prophetic oracles. The prophet Obadiah wrote it. Its authorship is difficult to date but was possibly written about 853 to 841 BC or 605 to 586 BC. The key personalities are the Edomites. The purpose of Obadiah is to show that God will judge all those who are against his children, his chosen people. Edom is used as the example of this truth. Obadiah is only one chapter the shortest book in the Old Testament, yet it tells of God's prophet Obadiah as he announces God's powerful and authoritative judgment on the nation of Edom. This is the fateful end of the nation of Edom. They had been in conflict with Israel since ancient times, in reality Edom is the descendant of Esau, Jacob's brother. In verses 1-9, to Obadiah declares the wickedness of the Edomites and gives examples of their pride, in the loftiness of your dwelling place, who say in your heart, who will bring me down to earth. He proclaims God's judgment on Edom, will I not on that day, declares the Lord, destroy wise men from Edom and understanding from the mountain of Esau. Verses 8 Verses 10 to 14 tell of the transgressions and offenses of Edom, implying that they should have acted like a brother who would stand for them, since they descended from the brothers, Jacob and Esau. Because of violence to your brother Jacob, you will be covered with shame, and you will be cut off forever. Verses 10 in verses 15 to 21, we read about the victory of Israel in the end, Esau's house will be a stubble and the house of Jacob will be a fire, verses 18. Edom was utterly non-existent by the first century AD. Some Esau Jonah Bible Book Summary Jonah Summary by J. Smith The book of Jonah is narrative history and a prophetic oracle. The prophet Jonah wrote it approximately 785 to 760 BC before Assyria conquered Israel's northern kingdom. Key personalities include Jonah, the captain and the ship's crew and the people of Nineveh. The purpose of this book is to show that God is a merciful and gracious God. Although the wicked city of Nineveh deserved to be crushed immediately, God was patient towards them. A reluctant prophet, Jonah originally ran from God before delivering a message of repentance to the nation of Nineveh. In chapter 1, God directed Jonah to go to Nineveh however, Jonah disobeyed, boarded a ship and headed for Tarshish. The sailors of the ship became concerned because of the great storm that brewed and Jonah explained that God was bringing judgment upon him. The sailors threw him into the sea where he was swallowed by an enormous fish. And the Lord appointed a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the stomach of the fish three days and three nights, 117. Chapter 2-3, After God had the fish cough him up, three days later, Jonah obeyed God and went to Nineveh to fulfill his mission. Jonah preached a message of repentance and to his surprise, the sinful city repented. Then the people of Nineveh believed in God, and they called a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least of them, 3 5. In chapter 4, 
God deals with Jonah and teaches him about his love and compassion. Knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness, and one who relents concerning calamity, for colon 2. Nineveh's repentance must have been short-lived, it was destroyed in 612 BC. Micah Bible Book Summary Micah Summary by J. Smith The book of Micah is a prophetic oracle. The prophet Micah wrote it 742 to 686 BC shortly before the northern kingdom's fall in 722 BC Key personalities are all the people of Samaria and Jerusalem. The purpose of the book of Micah was to proclaim warning and judgment to both the northern and the southern kingdoms. His message was similar to that of Isaiah and was written at about the same time. Micah described the impending judgment that would eventually exile the nation. Chapters 1 to 5 specifically explain the judgment for the wicked nations, for I will make Samaria a heap of ruins in the open country, planting places for a vineyard. I will pour her stones down into the valley and will lay bare her foundations, 1 colon 6. Then chapter 5 Micah miraculously predicts the birthplace of the Messiah in Bethlehem. Also in verse 2, he teaches that the Messiah is an infinite Savior, from everlasting, but as for you, Bethlehem Ephrata, too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you one will go forth for me to be ruler in Israel. His goings forth are from long ago, from the days of eternity, 5 colon 2. In chapters 6 to 7, Micah declares what God requires of men, he has told He has told you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. 6 8, Micah then proclaims God's restoration and salvation to his people, who is a God like you, who pardons iniquity and passes over the rebellious act of the remnant of his possession. He does not retain his anger forever, because he delights in unchanging love. 7.18 Summaries courtesy of the Ultimate Bible Summary Collection Bible Summary Bible Hub Nahum Bible Book Summary Nahum Summary by J. Smith The Book of Nahum is a prophetic oracle. The prophet Nahum wrote it approximately 663 to 612 BC just before the fall of Nineveh in 612 BC. He was raised up to preach God's judgment for a second time to Nineveh. Jonah was the first about 120 years earlier. Its purpose is to pronounce the final warning and judgment upon Nineveh, and he also addresses the rest of the Assyrian Empire. They returned to wickedness shortly after they repented back in Jonah's day. They would neglect Nahum and his message. Within 50 years, Nineveh would Within 50 years, Nineveh would be completely decimated and utterly wiped from the face of the earth. In chapter 1, Nahum warns of judgment, and describes the awesome power of God, mountains quake because of him and the hills dissolve, indeed the earth is upheaved by his presence, the world and all the inhabitants in it, 1 colon 5. He then goes on to encourage a hope for the southern kingdom because of the coming judgment of Nineveh. Thus says the Lord, though they are at full strength and likewise many, even so, they will be cut off and pass away. Though I have afflicted you, I will afflict you no longer. 112. Chapter 2 to 3 Nahum predicts the annihilation of Nineveh, and it will come about that all who see you will shrink from you and say, Nineveh is devastated. Who will grieve for her? Where will I seek comforters for you? 
3 colon 7, it was damaged so severely that it was lost in time. It wouldn't be until the 19th century that the remains of Nineveh would be identified. Alright, thanks for tuning in to that live stream, guys. I hope y'all enjoyed it. I'm going to continue the next video probably later today. We're going to finish where we left off at. So the next one. We're going to be listening to this. Abacook. He just said. Cook. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, we're going to listen to it on the next stream. So stay tuned. And I don't know how many we got left to go. Thirty-two left to go, y'all. Thirty-two summaries left to go. And we already know which one we left off on, so we gonna as I play, I'm gonna listen. Want to hear the from Genesis? All I'm gonna try to combine them all together, but I did the other ones on uh, on my Facebook page, so yeah, I'm gonna try to add them all together though. In the next video, I'm going to start off from where I left off right here. Yeah. All right, y'all. Stay tuned. Peace. Headshot squad. Headshot squad.